What is up producers? If you just opened up Ableton and Serum and you're trying to figure out how to macro map Serum in Ableton or automate Serum within Ableton, this video is for you. Today we're gonna to talk about how to control Serum from within Ableton, how to map to macros, how to pencil in automations, and pretty much how to communicate between the two flawlessly. And basically use Ableton Live to automate the crap out of Serum. One or two, works for both. Before we hop into the video, quick announcement for you guys. I recently dropped a super fire, complete start to finish music production course. It's designed to give you every single tool you're ever gonna need to produce professional quality music in 30 days, either if you're totally brand new or if you've been producing for a while, but you're just struggling to get your sound to the next level. It's over 17 hours of content distributed over 30 days of learning. We also have a super fire community where you can hop in and ask questions, free monthly sample packs, all kinds of cool stuff. Also, we've recently worked out a deal where if you sign up for the course, we can actually give you guys educational discounts on Ableton Live, FabFilter, Isotope, Sound Toys, Kilohertz, Arturia, and Output. So you could literally save thousands of dollars. And as of right now, the course is on sale, so it costs less than dinner. So definitely worth it, definitely worth checking out. Let's get into the video. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Serum 2. Grab a random preset for this. Sure. So here we have our box, which is Serum. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this little arrow down here, this little kind of pop open arrow. It's gonna give us this option that says configure. We're gonna click configure. And now whatever we click on, it's going to add to this little parameters box down here. So let's say we wanna automate the rate. It's gonna show up right here in green. Let's say we wanna automate the filter type. Let's say we wanna automate these macros here, which are kind of you know obvious to, to automate. And now what I'm gonna do is, now that these are all showing up here, now we can actually control these in Ableton directly. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna minimize this for a second, and then I'm gonna group this. So that's gonna be Command G or whatever the equivalence of Command is for you PC users, sorry. And now I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna right click these and I'm gonna map these each to different macros. So this one, uh, macro one, and it's gonna change the name for us right here. Uh, macro two, and just gonna kind of go down the line one at a time and map all these so they are all mapped to a macro. We have more than eight. If we want more, we can just hit this plus sign and we can do up to, I think, 12 now in Ableton Live 12. And just gonna keep mapping these. Now these controls are actually directly controllable within Ableton. Let's say I wanna edit the LFO rate. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to click A and notice when I click A, what's gonna happen is it's gonna open up this little dotted red line here. It's just a little dotted red line. You can also, aside from clicking A, you can click this. This is gonna be the automation lanes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move whatever control we want to adjust. So let's say we're, it's the LFO rate. It's gonna show us this line and we can come here to the timeline and all we have to do is double click. So right now I am in the mode where you kind of click and add different points where you want them. If you click B, it's gonna to switch to pencil mode which allows you to kind of draw stuff in. I don't really find this mode of editing helpful at all. It's kind of, unless I'm like automating something on and off, I'll do this, but most of the time I'm kind of clicking and adding where I want points to be. So I can just click, add them wherever I want them. I can, you know, command Z to backspace or just delete them, but we're just gonna double click to add the points. Also, if I wanna add a curve, I can hit option and now I can curve this in different ways. Another trick is I can actually right click here and it's gonna show me a section that says insert shapes. And I can actually use this to directly insert uh, pre-made shapes onto the timeline. So what I can do is click something like this. And now it's inserted this shape for me and I can edit this and stretch it and do whatever I want to it. So that's kind of a pretty cool little trick. So also if we wanna automate something else, let's say like drive, notice that our previous automation lane went away. And then once again, we have the dotted red line, which is gonna, uh, signify that we don't have any automation on this in particular macro yet. So again, I'm just gonna come in here and maybe add some right here. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you want to see both of them, that's why we have this option up here, these, these two different options. I'm going to add a lane right here. And now I can come over here and open up my other automation. So everything you automate is going to be uh, in red or have a red circle next to it. And now I can see both my automations at the same time if I want to kind of coordinate them or, or just look at them at the same time. <laughs> So that's how you automate. Uh, if you ever get something grayed out like this, what that means is that we adjusted the macro or whatever control it is, and it's no longer, it disengaged the previous uh, automation. This used to drive me crazy. The way to fix this is we would right click and we would go to re enable automation. So it's going to be like, okay, this is the automation you had before. I'm guessing you didn't mean to adjust this macro. Here it is. So another thing I wanted to note is we actually don't have to map these to macros within Ableton in order to automate them. I find this way easier. You can save this rack. There's a, there's a number of different reasons why you would want to map these to macros here. But if we didn't want to do that, what we would do is we would open up Serum. And let's say we want to automate, what is it? This wavetable deal here. So notice I haven't configured Serum. I haven't put it on any sort of control but I can automate it here. So we actually don't have to do any of that if we just wanna draw in a quick automation and then we can pencil this in. And then one more thing before we get out of here, uh, a really cool trick, probably one of my favorite things to do is macro randomization. I built this rack, I have one both for Serum 1 and Serum 2, I'll link them in the description. And basically what it is, is I took the most adjusted macros and controls out of Serum, and I mapped them all to different macros within Ableton Live. And I set the parameters so they make sense. And now what I can do is I can come in here with a preset. And just hit this little R button, which stands for randomize. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give me a cool, unique sound that makes sense every single time. Sometimes, depending on the preset, they can be a little rough, but this is kind of like a way of beat surfing, kind of finding something cool and kind of just going with it. This is how I do a lot of sound design because it's something that you might have not have thought of otherwise that is kind of like you hear it, you get feel inspired and you can build off it. And like I was saying, it's a completely unique sound. So even though you might use a preset to build it, it's completely unique. Nobody else has it. And that's really good for branding and kind of building your sound as an artist. Then you could just save the preset. So let's try this with like a different preset here. And it works with literally any Serum preset. So I love doing this. I'll link this in the description. Uh, one more thing to touch on before we get out of here is we can actually edit the macro map. So let's say for this LFO right here, we don't want it to go super fast. Doesn't really make sense. We don't want it to go super slow. Also doesn't make sense. So we can, what we can actually do is once we group Serum, so it has to be grouped, Command G, we can right click this and go to edit macro map. And now we can set the minimum and the maximum. So let's say we want it to start at a quarter and say we want it to, see we want it to start at half and we want it to end at a 16th because we don't want wobbles slower or faster than that. Then this macro is only gonna adjust that amount of space. Now it's only moving from half all the way up to 132, so it makes sense, like I was saying. So I hope this gave you guys a, a good overview of how to automate and macro map Serum, or now really any third-party plugin within Ableton Live. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Mark, mark, mark.